What's going on, people? Um, I've given it a couple of days, letting the new batteries charge up off of the solar array. Uh, as you know, I've been testing out Harbor Freight's 45-watt solar kit that you can buy. You can get it on sale. Average, I'm seeing around $150 to $160. Some places on sale is like $180, $190, and they go for over $200. But I'll tell you, for the price, it's a great introduction into solar. It really does work well. A lot of people are not giving these things the credit that they're due. I'm going to tell you that right now, and I'm going to show you why. So, as I was saying, I've let these batteries here charge for a couple of days. Now, I've only got two right now. I'm going to be putting two more in line. And then eventually, once I purchase the second kit, put that in line with two extra panels, I'm going to have eight total. And I can run a bank of 12 batteries comfortably now here we go in line everything's wired up you can see you can go and get these wire kits from AutoZone um, I even Harbor Freights some of them carry them it's a four gauge wire nice thick has the the terminal on the end so there's no crimping involved you don't have to add anything you hook your kit up the way I showed you in the in the last video Hook your, your alligator clips up and from the controller. Let the batteries start charging. Now, I went and I bought these batteries brand new. Even though they're brand new, you want to give them a couple of days to charge. At least two to three days. And you, you're going to put your voltage meter on there. You're going to put your controller on. You're going to turn it on. You're going to see 12 something, 12.5 even, 12.8. And be like, oh, that's plenty. It's not. Take that battery and try and crank your car with it. See what's going to happen. Exactly. It's not going to work too well. Let the batteries get a nice charge on them. Then, hook up your second or your third set of four gauge wires at this point. These are going to be running over and being connected to the one I'm using right now. Vector, Max SST, 10.2 amps, 1200 watts, 2400 peak. Now, what the peak is, it will give you 2,400 watts just for the short, a short amount of time. If you do it for too long, you're going to end up overrunning your inverter and you, you can and will blow them out. So, stay around the 1,200 watt range. That's right in the middle of it. And running in the inverter half power from what it's normally set at with your battery array, you can go for like days you, you you can be good depending upon what you're running so all right now I'm going to show you right here. take the back of the inverter as you can see right here positive and negative terminal end of your cable slips into the back of your terminal right there and then you simply screw that screw down on the top and it tightens it up on the wire and the wire will not go anywhere. So let me take care of this and I'll get right back to you. All right, we're back here. Negative is in, tightened up in the terminal as I showed you. Now here's your positive cable. When you first put this on, when you first go to touch it on there, you may see a slight spark. Now of course, now that time when I wanted to do it for demonstration purposes, it's not. You may see a slight spark when you attach the cable onto the terminal. That's simply because you do have power running from your batteries through the lines coming up to here. You have a fuse. You have fuses in line. Your controller also has a fuse built in back. Now, be smart about it. Do what everybody else is doing, including myself, Harbor Freight, um, AutoZone, other places, even Radio Shack carries a nice big hefty external fuse block that you could put in line do it so okay cable quite simple in and just tighten down your terminal here once you crank that down enough that cable cannot come out turn your power inverter around and you'll be able to power it up let me put this down for a moment, I'm going to crank this up and then uh, I'll show you.